issues and soft skill issues during the simulation and so then immediately following the simulation they go over into the debrief room and they immediately debrief about the students performance during the simulation so they get immediate feedback not only about their technical skills but about their soft skills so it's a very holistic way to judge a student's interaction with clients not only from the technical skill standpoint but from the interpersonal standpoint and that seems to be the number one complaint of employers today is your graduates have great technical skills but their soft skills need a lot of work. So we needed to change things up so that we could work on developing better soft skills in our graduates and I think simulation is the way to do it. So it's proved pretty powerful venue to focus on that soft skill development especially when we bring in standardized patients. So as we go around the virtual hospital we had the four specialty labs and then we have a family waiting room area, cafeteria, locker room for visiting schools, and then around the corner we have two more labs that are basic med surge rooms. Sometimes we make them look like nursing home rooms so that we can simulate a long-term care facility as well. The virtual hospital, again, is 10,000 square feet, and it just mimics a hospital setting, and it allows us to create the next best thing to being there. And in some regards, it's better than the real thing because we can actually pick the diagnosis and or trauma and or situation that we want the student to experience. And you can't always do that in a real life setting. So as we leave the virtual hospital, we're gonna go downstairs to the zero level, and the only programmatic labs we have on this level are related to our EMS program, uh, emergency medical services. We have an EMT basic program that we run and a paramedic program. Down here, we wanted to do several things that mimicked real life experience. So hence, you see the lab that has the automobile. And what we can do is put the automobile in different positions, put one of the high-end simulators in there, one of the wireless simulators. And so the paramedics have to practice treatment and evacuation from a motor vehicle. And if they do something wrong, the person on the side that's managing the wireless simulator can manage the physiological response of the simulator based on what the paramedic students are doing to it. So it is, again, the next best thing to a real life situation. So they can practice treatment and evacuation in an automobile. And then you'll see we also have a mock bar and a mock convenience store. We're still working on the convenience store. It's not fully stocked or finished. But what we're trying to mimic in a convenience store is they're usually very crowded, so the paramedics are forced to do a floor to a counter to overhead lift. So what we're trying to mimic there is lifting. And then in the bar setting, what we're trying to mimic is lighting because state law does not mandate that when paramedics or EMS are called to a code at a bar, the bar does not have to turn the lights on. And so what we do is we keep it at a bar light setting and we can use standardized patients so that it's very crowded, very loud, and the paramedics have to learn to work under those circumstances and usually have to have a flashlight in their mouth um, because they can't see anything. So what we're simulating there is the lighting. And then so after they've practiced treating and evacuating in one of those three real life settings, then they transport the wireless mannequin and or standard patient over to the ambulance bay and they can practice loading the ambulance, locking the cot to the floor, doing the treatment in the ambulance, and then removing the cot from the ambulance and transporting the client then to the first floor virtual hospital and admitting him. So then they have that engagement with nursing. Again, like I talked about, the interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary opportunity for instruction where not only do they learn the role of a nurse, but how does that role change when I'm engaging with with the paramedics or with the physical therapist assistant. So that in a nutshell is the Health Science Institute. And from an instructional standpoint, we want to move towards hands-on simulated learning and less talking head rote lecture. So the next step in this whole process of uh, the HSI is to have faculty capture their lectures 
and have them available for students to listen to before class, after class, and when they're engaged at the Health Science Institute, it's all application of knowledge so that we are moving away from the traditional lecture model and into active, engaged learning here at the Health Science Institute. And last but not least, as we're going out the front door of the Health Science Institute, if you look to your right, you will see a storefront area. And what we're hoping to do is finalize a partnership with Collaboration Works. She specializes in medical equipment and supplies, and she would have a satellite store here at the Health Science Institute, but would allow our students to do service learning projects. And she sells her medical equipment and supplies at low or no cost to the uninsured and working poor. And so it's a nice partnership for not only student learning, but for community service and community outreach. So we're hopeful that Collaboration Works will be able to occupy that space by the first of the year. This concludes the tour of Metropolitan Community College, Penn Valley Health Science Institute. As you can see, the HSI is on the cutting edge of instructional delivery for the new generation of healthcare providers. Mm -hmm.